This is Boston Greedy Code, the entertaining code editor. Have you ever felt bored while coding? Well, that no longer happens with Greedy Code. You get comments roasting you on each line of code, Sigma music in the background, dramatic zoom, glow, post processing, blue extensions, and most importantly, sunlight. We've had many code editors, some claiming to be smart, lightweight, actually lightweight, and actually extra lightweight. But we've never had a code editor be interesting, so I decided to make one. I wanted to create it using the Tori framework, which is basically just putting a website in a desktop application. And I hated every second of it. I tried making the music play on start for creating the first feature, which is a code piping to the music like this, but apparently I need permission from the user. I do not like web dev. After digging a little, I found out that this was fixed in version 2 of Tori, and I'm using version 1, so we're switching versions, baby, let's go. <coughs> yeah, take your time. A day later, and I ported everything to Tori V2, and I do not under any circumstance recommend you doing that until it releases out of alpha, but we got music working. It's time to implement the first feature, the two words, which applies the pop-up effect subtitles usually have on your code on the song beat. I created a Rust function which takes the path to the WAV file, which is basically the music, and returns a vector with duration and volume. It maps the whole song to where the peak volume is, so we can determine the intensity of the pop-up effect. Hooking all that to the JavaScript was surprisingly easy because of the time update event. But from there it all went downhill. You know, I've realized that web dev sucks. Interacting with CSS via JS is just a pain, especially when you get to the point where you have to write CSS in strings. There are frameworks that claim to make it easier to write web dev, but ultimately I just believe that they overcomplicate an already messed up concept. Like man, there's M, RAM, EX, DH, VW, VMIN, VMAX, CH, CM, MM, VTX, just let me... Oh, would you look at that, Rust finished compiling. Never mind what I said. So I'm going insane. I can't figure out how to center this stupid dev while it's being transformed. I do not care anymore. I'm rewriting everything in the dough. Screw your stupid web dev, screw CSS, screw JavaScript. I am out. I wanted to add a language server which provides you with autocomplete and errors. But for that I either need to learn the language server protocol and write it in the dough from scratch, because there's no library for that, or parse the JSON given by a third party LSP which can make the overall experience laggy. So I will not implement basic error detection at all. You're writing JavaScript anyway, why do you care about runtime errors? I added the ability to open files. I'm not a big fan of the built-in file dialog though, so I'm gonna make my own. After threatening Bing AI to write me the icons of 100 extensions, I hide this array. Using the dot dir access resource, I was able to read the files in a folder and format them like this. So we have a small issue. In the dot, when you press a shortcut or action, when a text input is focused, that text input still gets what you've pressed. For example, if you press Ctrl O, O will be registered in the text input. The way I got around this was by locking the code input when you press Ctrl. But if you think about it for more than a second, unlike me, you'll realize you can Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And we're calling that a feature, because all code editors nowadays are praising themselves on AI integration. How you never have to leak your code editor to get AI assistance. I'm joking by the way, I'll try to fix it. And so trying to fix it, he did. It's me. Five hours later, after recompiling the engine about six times and learning C++, I fixed the shortcut issue. To keep it short, I searched where the other UI shortcuts were saved, text edit.cpp, and added my own shortcut, UI open. I ran the code and, oh oh, something's undefined. I had to edit the header file. Save, recompile, test, doesn't work, start panicking, take a break, voices in my head talk about the embarrassment greedy code will receive, accepts me to write good code but can't properly register keystrokes. What a worthless editor. Get back to PC. Search to the deepest C++ I've ever seen, find this huge if statement chain at line 2128, it has accept event and return, I add my own command there, it works, no way, good old please fix, never mind, feature me here. After opening an issue in this, I was made aware that there is in fact a way to fix it, you just have to kind of take control of the input. Ok, it's been 2 days, 2 wasted days because I was trying to add a blur effect when you open the file picker, could not get it to work, texture, screen texture, UV, screen UV, world map, what? 
I just made a background and added this transition. I also added the double dots at the top of the file picker, which means go back, fix some bugs and now the script can know which file you click. With that we can make the user be able to open folders or even files. We'll start with folders first. I'm using the dir access resource in the DAO, which has the change dir function. So making you open folders was easy. Now for the most important feature, Lua integration. Screw your JavaScript for the extensions, Creative Code runs Lua. Literally every mainstream code editor uses something called extensions, which for users feel like magic, and for the ones that make them, feel like hell. That's VS Code for you. The way the modding, or extensions if you will, works in Greedy Code is like this. There are two folders in the app data, Lengths and Themes. The Lengths folder will be filled with Lua scripts for each file extension. These scripts implement highlighting as well as detecting functions and variables. The themes folder will also be filled with Lua scripts but for themes. Whoever wants to extend the functionality or appearance of greedy code can make themes or plugins for languages just like this. And everything is documented in the readme. Integrating Lua in your projects can be complex, but learning programming doesn't have to. Brilliant provides an interactive and engaging platform for learning math, data analytics, AI and programming. With thousands of lessons from basic to advanced and new content are Added monthly, Brilliant makes learning fun and interactive. Brilliant helps you develop critical thinking skills by solving problems rather than memorizing them. If you are unsure where to begin, the Thinking in Code course is a great way to learn real-world applications. You will get familiar with Python through a friendly built-in drag-and-drop editor, learn the essentials from variables to conditionals, and most importantly, build your foundation in writing programs. You can get started for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash facetab and you get 20% of an annual plan. Now let's get back to integrating Lua. Uh, I forgot the reason Lua started index 1, why? Okay, so let's take a look at how VS Code's themes work for One Dark Pro. 2000! 2000 lines of code! There is no way! It has a different color for each language! Alright, now the autocomplete, syntax highlighting and themes run from Lua files which are stored in the app data, currently only supporting JavaScript and the One Dark Pro theme. If you're wondering, this is how the extensions look like. Before we get to the fun stuff, we have two more important features to add, the settings and the theme picker. The settings were interesting. I first wanted to make them just like a file picker, where you just press arrow up or arrow down to move and select which settings you want to modify. But you can't really input stuff with that type of UI. So to the next idea. If you don't know, the Godot editor is built with Godot itself. The editor has this inspector tab which has some good inputs like this one. Godot itself doesn't really provide those exact nodes, but we get a slider, checkbox and drop down. With those I created this. And you can open the settings panel by pressing Ctrl comma. And it has the same transition as the file picker. Having two panels that can open at the same time caused some funny stuff like this, so I locked every other panel if one is already active. Sadly the settings panel isn't really keyboard only, but let's be real. How often do you enter the settings of your code editor? VM Neo, VM and Emacs don't count, they're not real code editors. Now we have to do the theme picker before we move on. Uh, I don't know what happened here and hope to never have to touch this ever again. Greedy code currently looks like the most average code editor you can find out there. So now it's time for some actual features. Dramatic zooms. This was actually inspired by the project that Dramatic Editor created by Sony and was pretty much my inspiration for making this entire code editor. The initial problem I ran into when zooming in was blurry text, so just like every other programmer would, I increased the resolution of the code editor from 1920 by 1080 to 72660 to 41040. Surprisingly, my PC handled it with no lag issue. It was just hogging up 4 gigabytes of memory, still better than the average NeoVim instance. That's acceptable, but we can probably decrease it. Dividing the resolution by 2 removed 300 megabytes. Dividing it again by 2 didn't move it at all. I tried exporting greedy code to an executable and it used 1GB RAM, so I guess that's good. I later found out that we can actually render the font at higher quality, so our issue is fixed and we no longer have to render the project at 10k quality. I added the camera moving for the main node, then implemented it for the other nodes as well. It still has some noticeable issues, but it's good enough. After the zoom was there, I also wanted to add some effects that you can toggle. I added this sunlight one, which, with GitHub Dark, makes it look like you're coding in a deep pit and you have some sunlight from above, which I really like. I also added this retro looking effect too, but it only works on very very dark themes like GitHub Dark. Oh yeah, we don't talk about the wind shader I removed. 
We do not need to talk about it. I got this cool glow effect while messing with the world environment which completely destroyed the white mode, but whatever, who uses that anyway. I did the ability to toggle the glow, sunlight and DHS effect in the settings menu, and that's it for shaders. We at Boston believe that everyone should program with music on, therefore our product Greedy Code will always play funk music. And since we are aiming for the best retention possible, Greedy Code will accompany the funk music by doing transitions. Now remember the rough function I've mentioned at the start of the video. We need that ported to Godot, but Godot doesn't really have the audio support we need. I tried modifying the engine to support the volume analyzing function, but I gave up after a few hours because the function just didn't appear in Godot. The solution for now will be to run the Rust program on the music you want to add, copy the data it prints and put it in Godot. I added some camera zoom for the music and brought it into settings. The next feature is Boss in Reels, a totally original concept. Don't worry, I'm not just letting a TikTok live video on the screen and calling it a day. Boss in Reels can be toggled with Ctrl L, because every time you open it, you take an L. It opens an overlay with three random comments from a bunch of random users. Some users were taken from my Discord server. And even the name Greedy Code was chosen in a poll there. So if you want to join, because the chat dies out faster than the average JavaScript framework lifespan, link in the description. The comments are provided by the Lua plugins. So for each file extension, you should get new comments, assuming the file extension is supported. Imagine being roasted for writing a PHP. Uh, this is gonna be great. The only language currently supported is JavaScript, and its comments are not good to say the least, because I make them. I fixed the bug in the settings, made the Lua files be automatically injected to the app data folder on start, which basically means if you run a newer version of Greedy Code, the new Lua files will be automatically updated and exported the game. If you want to use it, as always, it will be in the description below and contributions are welcomed. You can add more themes, more support for other file extensions, features inside Greedy Code, and other. This was the most fun I've had with a project in a while. Integrating Lua and seeing it all pieced together like a puzzle, amazing. A big thanks to all the patrons and to members for supporting the channel, thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one. Oh, and since Z was built for macOS only, Greedy Code will never support macOS. Problem solved.